All right, let's check out a couple of real-world problems where um, you would need to graph an exponential function in order to solve it. So the general form of an expo exponential function is y equals uh, some number times some, un uh, some other number raised to the power of x. Um, and uh, these problems will be for exponential growth and decay. And we could... You know, it's the same same kind of equation, but we could label it more. Uh, let's, let's keep that on the screen. Uh, label it in a more specific way. We could say x at um, at after a certain a certain um, number of periods of growth is equal to what you started with x at time zero. You know, after zero cycles of growth, um, times um, now this is the growth rate. So, or rather, one plus the rate of growth. Um, so r raised to the power of x. Okay. So let's look at these um, some specific cases here. So the growth rate of the global human population is currently about. 1.1 percent per year. Um, you know, why is it so low? You would think, if in general, um, two people would produce, you know, at least one offspring, you would think like 50 percent growth or something, or you know, even two offspring, 100 percent growth. It, but people die. So overall, the general, the overall, the growth rate is 1.1 percent, and not everyone has babies, et cetera, et cetera. So overall, uh, how fast is the human population growing? 1.1% per year. Per year, so the growth cycle is one year. So this X thing would represent number of years. Um, so if the current population is 7 billion, so what you start off with is 7 billion, and this growth rate is maintained, you know, it's one, you know, generally 1.1% per year, meaning there's no gigantic world wars or global famines or something that would drastically affect that growth rate. Uh, what will the growth curve of the population look like for the next century? So, wh you know, what can we expect over the next century? Well, first, uh, you would come up with an equation that represents the situation. So we want to say um, x of, sorry, this should say to the power of t. I apologize. Um, x at time t the population at time t is uh, what you started with, so 7 billion. We'll just, our unit here will be in billions of people, times 1 plus the growth rate. It's 1.1 percent, so as a decimal, that'd be 0 0.011 plus point, so that looks like a mul multiplication, plus uh, point zero one one raised to the power of however many growth cycles. And we want to look at t uh, from zero to one hundred. We want to look at it over the next one hundred growth cycles, i.e. the next you know, because the, the growth period is one year and you know over the next one hundred years. So this is our function and uh, if you were to type that into a calculator or a computer program or whatever is your graphing tool of choice you would say y, you know, the value of the function is equal to 7, and then maybe you'd simplify that time, you know, that's 1 plus 0 0.011 is 1.011 raised to the power of x. Okay, that's how you would uh, translate this situation into something that your calculator would understand or your computer program. And when you did that, you would get something like see, can I get there, um, where you would get something like this. So I, I graphed this already. Um, you would get something like this. So, here, let me bring that to the front. You get something like this. So the x-axis would represent years. So this is now. This is 100 years from now. This is the population in billions, so we start off about seven billion. So 
this is kind of what we could expect uh, unless there's some kind of major, major, major catastrophe, you know, beyond the catastrophes already happening now. So, uh, so you know, 50 years from now, looks like even even less than 50 years from now, we can expect the population to, to top 10 billion. 100 years from now, uh, over 20 billion. Now, of course, this growth rate might not be constant. Um, uh, you know, we might re we might reach a limit where it's just impossible to grow further, so the growth rate would decline or whatever. But if things continue as they are, this is generally how the population would grow. Okay. So let's uh, let's shrink this and just kind of store it over here. Okay, so let's look at a, a similar example. Sorry. Um, depleted uranium, um, which is the, the isotope uranium, there goes my phone, um, with 238 neutrons, U-238, has a half-life of 4.468 billion years. Sorry about that. I don't know if you can hear my phone, if that's just me. Um, U-238 has a half-life of 4.468 billion years. Okay, so meaning its its period of growth is 4.68 billion years, and every period, um, its growth rate is negative 50%. It's it's cutting itself in half. This is what a half-life means. So the period of time in which it takes for the the amount of uranium to be half of what it was at the start of that growth growth cycle. Um, suppose a 120 millimeter shell containing 4.5 kilograms of U-238 is not used in warfare. Um, and that's that's accurate. You know, a, a DU shell of 120 millimeters could have as much uranium as four and a half kilograms, which is which is a ton. Um, how much U-238 will be left in the shell over the next 45 billion years or so? And I use that absurd time scale just to to demonstrate. Um, you know, this these these radioactive isotopes have such long half-lives you know uh, so uh, they don't just kind of go away like garbage in a you know garbage dump um, yeah anyway getting slightly off the topic of math here but anyway we want to know if it just sits there in this uh, shell how much will be left over the next 45 billion years or so so you, you could write a function for that um, where the amount of uranium, well, let's call it U, the amount of u uranium after um, a certain number of half-lives, we'll call them H, is equal to the uranium you started with, uh, you know, four and a half kilograms times one plus the rate of growth, which is negative uh, 0.5. It's it's the growth rate is negative fifty percent. Fifty percent is half, uh, but it's it's declining by half. Um, raised to the power of however many half lives. So in in calculator speak, we would say y is equal to now what you start with is four point five kilograms, and then one plus negative point five is just point five. Raised to the power of x, so you could pop that into your graphing tool of choice um, and it should look something like this uh, again let me um, where here at the beginning we so this is amount of that radioactive isotope of, of uranium uh, at time equals zero so four and a half kilograms and then the x-axis is the number of half-lives. So one half-life is 4.468 billion years. Two half-lives is whatever that is, about nine billion years, um, um, etc. So these are multiples of 4.468 billion years. So over the next 45 billion years or so, uh, you know, it's about 10 half-lives. So that's why I have it graphed to 10. So uh, you know, even even after six half lives, you know, 24 billion years um, plus, there's still some of that uranium in there. That's a lot. That's a long time, right? And then when it gets, 
you know, around eight or nine or ten half lives. There's still a tiny bit left, but but not very much. All right, so there's a couple real world examples. If you want to see uh, the behavior of exponential growth or decay uh, over time, it's very useful exponential functions. Um, all right, that's it. See ya.